Bob. Bob. I'm James. Pleased to meet you, James. James Feasel. James Spiegel? Feasel. Oh, Feasel. Oh, okay. It's a strange yeah. one, but you know what? What? Comes from that area over there. Is that right? Alsace area. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll like to hear what we you kind of tell me and I'll tell you what I had okay. have know about. Okay. To be honest with you, I was too young <laughs> really to to comprehend what was happening. You know, when you're about 11 years old and the, the memories, even if you're young, some of the memories you know, you'll never forget. I forget what I ate for breakfast, but I can't forget, you know, what happened in 1939. My life changed at 11 when the, the German Gestapo asked me to take my pants down. Because I was frightened. And I'll never forget that. That's, uh, that's when it changed and you know, the world changed. And I found out that I no longer have parents and didn't know where they were or what happened to them. That was, you don't know. That's when life changes. My end of the Dachau story is that I was driving tank for an S3 officer and then he called me and he said, Jim, they've run into something they don't understand. We've got to get up there. So he'd tell them, move their tanks. Roads are always narrow, you know. And we'd go up there and this day we run up there and there was fence as high as this, this room chicken wire and barbed wire. But they had a label, it says Dachau. And he said, Jim, put this tank through that gate. So I put the tank through the gate and immediately on our, our right was a pile of human yes. remains. Let me ask you, what gate did you go through? Was it the main gate where it says, uh, Arbeit macht uh, war, I'm still, you free? I'm still working with Germans to try to decide where that site was uh -huh. because there was one building, yes, a railroad track. That's where we came in, right. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember what end you came in? I'm just trying to picture. I would best I could tell you, you know, we didn't have compasses right, on right, that time. Right, right. Right. Oftentimes the overcast right, would, right. would, but I think I came in from what I would call the, the northwest. In the northwest, okay. In, 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 in the northwest. That, that was the, I think the northwest was the, where the experimental uh, barracks were. The, I think that's exactly, when you yeah. say experimental, I think this was an experimental facility. Right, right, right. All right. Yeah. Human experimental. Yes. Yeah, human experimental. I, th I think so. The barracks I was in was not too far away, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe about a couple of hundred yards. You know, I thought the possibility he could have been that man that tried to walk to my tank <laughs> and didn't we, have enough energy to get there. Yeah, we, we just, uh, it, you know, it was just, I don't know. It was really, but thank God, you know, I'm here talking to my liberator. Let me tell you, they were the greatest thing in the world. I mean, really, you know, we just, we seen them coming and I couldn't, we couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. Well, I am proud, so proud of that proud. fact, you know, proud that I lived through it also. And, and now to finally sit down with one of the individuals, you know, I never got that opportunity. And uh, you were, yeah. I think you were sent by God. God yeah. sent you. You were sent and you, you keep thanking him for where he put your little, moved your little peg every now and <laughs> then that you right. avoided some other damage. Yeah. But we just, uh, it was just a, I don't know, I just, it's, but I'm so happy, you know, I decided to join the army, you know. You know, good Lord, this had something, some purpose. That's what I say.
good Lord had a purpose, right? A good Lord had a hand in it, or we wouldn't be sitting. That's right, we wouldn't be talking to each other.